Hi guys, Clarissa here. So um, the historical event that caught my attention was the NCAA Finals of 1960. Um, the, it was Texas Western against Kentucky. They um, This was more than just the game because for the first time in history, an all-African-American um, starting lineup was ever presented um, in the finals and actually won the NCAA championship. Um, a little background history, Kentucky at the time was the team expected to win it, to win this game. Um, they were coached by Adolph Ralph, who was considered one of the most successful coaches in college history. Um, he was also known for exclusively just recruiting players from Kentucky and not recruiting African-American players, um, which this at the time wasn't that of a significant um, issue it was kind of like a norm um, but on the other hand we had Texas Western who were the underdogs and were coached by Don Hoskins who um, was known for having an integrated team with different racial backgrounds um, he didn't look at color he coached all these men and treated them all the same um, so when they went into the finals Texas was um, ranked number three and uh, Kentucky was ranked number one, um, and Texas obviously won 72 to 65. Um, but according to the NCAA BB Sports News, um, this game was never looked at as race or making a statement on segregation. They just wanted to simply win the game. Um, but years later, we would come to realize um, how significant this game was to the world. Um, this game opened many doors for African-American basketball african-american um, college basketball players in the south along with opportunity for them to attend college um, but for this video um, i wanted to talk about um, analyzing televised sports um, specifically um, so you have five channels of communication you have image graphics voice sound and music um, the one that i'm going to focus on is imagery of televised sports um, so this has a lot of components. You have camera work, lighting, color, type of clothing, using slow motion, etc. Um, if you notice in today's sports, um, we get a lot of close-ups during um, the sporting event. The, and this actually all started in the 1950s when um, sport producers were trying to figure out a way to like broaden their viewer population and um, enhance the color of broadcasting. Um, because if you take a look back at older footage, um, you'll see that it is a lot more dry and you feel less connected to the players. Um, footage is, was usually shot like at a distance and rarely, if any, did you get any close-ups. Um, so in the 1950s, um, they noticed differences in like audience members and they actually concluded with two different groups opposites from each other so like they had the expert versus the new mem new audience member and then they had the um, female versus male um, which they then made the assumption that males were experts and females were less familiar with sports um, so they so then they started using close-ups um, which was a new component of imagery um, that was directed more towards the female um, viewers. Um, if you um, if you compare sports shots from the 1950s to today, um, you can see that drastic change there in the techniques. Um, like now, they'll have full they'll show full shots of the players, which gives the audience a sense of like social relationship a sense of a social relationship with them. Or when the camera moves in towards the player, it allows the audience to um, be more observant and have a more focused um, view. Um, or from switching or switching from one image to the to the other simultaneously gives a sense of excitement. Um, so I just thought this was really cool, just how sports, um, sporting events have changed drastically over the time. Um, but what I think was really cool is how um, sports media back then and still today um, still is able to bring up stories to the stage. Um, how media plays such a huge influence in 